So if your life plans take you to the beautiful Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, you might be asking yourself, what are the steps I need to follow in order to buy a house? And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. So let's get started. Hey, thanks so much for watching. And if you are watching this video, you are here to find out what you need to do to purchase a home right here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. My name is Matt Moore. I'm a real estate agent here. Uh, certainly one person who could give you a little insight on what that might look like moving forward on a home purchase right here in the beautiful Lancaster County area. Now, there are some things you should know and we're going to be breaking down all of those steps here as we go through this video. The very first step that you should be aware of and you should think about is to well, hire a real estate agent, right? And again, yes, I am a real estate agent here. I'd love to work with you and I'm helping people honestly all the time relocating here to the Lancaster area, even retiring here to the Lancaster area because it is such a great place to retire as well. And you know what? I'm happy to help talk to you as well. Whatever conversations you'd like to have, whatever goals you'd like to meet, I would like to help you with that. Now, again, it doesn't matter if you go with somebody other agent or you go with me, I'm happy to help you. But if you're not going with me and you're not gonna hurt my feelings too much, and I'm happy to provide any information for you regardless. But that being said, you really should hire a local expert on the market. A real estate agent is going to help you understand what is happening with our current market, help you understand what you might be expecting as you go out showing and searching for homes and what you might expect as you go through the under contract process. Now, now my personal philosophy is to make you the most educated buyer out there all over the area and that is going to lead to advantages down the road because the most educated people make the best decisions moving forward now i'll be honest with you our market is red hot just like it is pretty much everywhere across the entire united states most markets with the exception of a few bigger cities bigger metros are seeing very very hot sellers markets and yeah here in lancaster we are no different either we've got homes that are coming on the market and they're selling in the blink of an eye generally speaking though that price range where something like that is happening is between about the 250 to 350 price range maybe even stretch it up to the 400,000 price range uh, and also that three to four bedroom single family detached home with a little bit of land those are very popular and that's where a lot of buyers are concentrating their efforts here in the Lancaster area so if you are in one of those uh, price ranges or maybe that's what you're looking for a three to four bedroom house with a little bit of land well you might be up against a competition there's at least there's a pretty good chance that you will see some competition from from that. So I'll be honest with you, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the highest offer. And that's coming from a real estate agent, right? There are some ways you can make your offers creative without being the highest sale price. And it does involve getting creative with some of these contingencies, some of these little breakdowns and things in terms of closing costs that you can make yourself a more advantageous buyer moving forward. Right now, the biggest things that are making uh, sellers look a different direction for offers have to do with a couple of things. First and foremost, inspections. I know it's hard to say I'm gonna be willing to forego an inspection. Why would you buy a car without taking a test drive? Same thing for a house. Why would you buy a house without getting an inspection? However, I will be honest and say that there are people doing that. They are foregoing inspections in order to make their offer that much better. I'm not advocating that you do that in your personal situation. In fact, everyone's personal situation and comfort level is going to be different. So again, something to consider, something to watch for. But again, you don't have to completely waive that home inspection. There are some things that we can do to get creative with it so you can still have the home inspection done but maybe it's not as sticky of a contingency for the seller to analyze another thing that you'll have to consider is potentially making do with some of the cash forward in terms of bridging an appraisal gap right now home values are continuing to increase appraisals tend to lag behind that generally speaking so we are seeing a market where it is more common than not to have appraisals come in lower than what the offer prices are and if you have some cash to be able to bridge that gap say for example if you buy a three hundred thousand dollar house or at least that's the offer you put in and the appraisal comes in back at 280 but you have twenty thousand dollars extra to put forward towards a down payment to bridge that gap well then you're a much better situation because you are telling the seller look we know we're going to be paying a little bit higher than these appraised values may come back at and again could be a come back in at value but you might be a little bit of that appraisal shortfall so telling the seller that you're willing to bridge that gap with some extra cash makes them feel better overall and makes them more likely to take your offer over the others 
So the first thing that's gonna happen when you contact me to help you purchase a home is we're gonna have a conversation. Could take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, but we will have an initial conversation so I can learn more about you and what you are looking to do in the long term. Now that also means getting to know you a little bit more, your situation, where you're coming from, your timelines, your price range, what you're looking for in a house, all of that good stuff. And we're going to be doing that initially together. What I will do after that, it depending on how much information I still need is perhaps Perhaps even set up a Zoom call with you so that we can look face to face. I can get to know not only your voices, but also your faces and uh, help to understand a little bit more about what you may need in the purchase of a home here in Lancaster. Like what you see here today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I've got more videos to come, especially about living in Lancaster. So if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. The very next thing that I am going to do is get you set up into our MLS system, which brings me to point number two, how to buy a home here in Lancaster is to get set up in the MLS system. Now, I know most of you probably use Zillow.com or Realtor.com or whatever the case might be. And hey, I do too. But at the same time, there are some shortfalls with using those items. The first thing is that if you're using Zillow, a lot of times the tax numbers are not correct. In particular, here in Lancaster County, those property tax numbers tend to actually about 50% of the time not be accurate. And the reason for that is because that property tax number for the schools tends to be in different locations for different areas. So that means that Zillow is looking for one area for that school tax. It doesn't exist, so it comes back as a zero. Therefore, that property tax is significantly lower because the school tax is the most expensive property tax we have here in the state of Pennsylvania. So keep that in mind. As you're looking through Zillow and Realtor.com, you may see those tax numbers. And I will say, if you see something that seems too good to be true, well, it probably is. Uh, probably too low for some of the uh, comparable sales or comparable homes in that same neighborhood. The other thing that I would caution you with regards to Zillow.com and Realtor.com and all those other sites is that when a home comes on the market, sure, it can take less than a couple of hours before it populates from the MLS system to all of those sites, Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, Realtor.com, whatever it is. But when the home goes under contract, it can actually take up to two weeks before that is then updated and populated through those very same websites. So it's always important to have a direct access line into the MLS system because you will get the most accurate information and the most immediate because that's where the real, real estate agents are changing that information overall, which then populates around. And I'd hate to have the conversation with you that uh, you say, Matt, this house looks awesome. We should go check it out. Let's go look. And I have to tell you and break the bad news that it went under contract two weeks ago, but because of the Zillow information being wrong, well, yeah, that's that's where we lie. So again, some words of caution, but I do encourage people to use whatever they're comfortable with. So if that is Zillow, if that's realdoor.com, keep using it. The MLS system, what I will plug you into is a free service. It delivers those listings to you via email automatically, and you can get immediate access to what's going on, all of the accurate information right there in your MLS portal. You can favorite things, you can put things in the trash, you can leave little notes behind on a property and say, Matt, I love this house. I will see those things on the back end. I will be able to get a much better understanding over time of what you guys are looking for in a house here in Lancaster. Hey, so sorry for the interruption, but I did want to invite you over on social media to uh, follow my pages here. Search Matt Moore Homes on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and all of my accounts will pop up. And oh, by the way, while you're there, send me a message. Tell me you came from YouTube. would love to see uh, us be able to connect together on these social platforms. So again, searching Matt Moore Homes, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll see you there. The third thing that you'll need to do when you're looking to purchase a home in Pennsylvania, and again, this may not apply for everybody, but for most people it will, is you will want to get in contact with a lender. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I got a lender here where I'm at, I'm gonna go ahead and use them. That's fine, That's that can be advantageous as well if you're comfortable using them. However, I will say, and maybe just a suggestion, is to use a local lender to here in Lancaster. When we're in such a hyper-competitive market like this, and sometimes these houses have 10, 15, even 20 offers on them, the listing agents are going to be looking through those offers very carefully to see who has the best financing? Where is that financing coming from? Am I, am I comfortable with this lender? Do I know that they can get the job done in the time that they can do it? Is there a point person? Is there a contact? Is there somebody that I can reach out to? And using somebody who's local, who a listing agent may be more comfortable with using, may be advantageous to you because if it's somebody they've worked with before in the past, that means they might be more comfortable saying, hey, this is a great 
pre-qualification from this lender, I'm much more comfortable using this lender and these people because they are using so-and-so that I've worked with before. I work with a great lender here in Lancaster area. They are white glove all the way. Customer service is phenomenal and they are one of the most more renowned uh, lenders in this area so that you can definitely have that advantage when you do go to put in an offer. A lot of times as well they do offer very competitive rates and fees and if they can't beat a fee well they'll be honest with you and say hey look that's a better fee than we'll ever be able to offer. You should go with that. I'm happy to provide that information for you as well, but it's very, very important, especially now in COVID days, that we need to have that pre-qualification in hand so that we are looking at homes that are in your price range and therefore not going and looking at homes that might expose you or somebody else or whatever to COVID if we didn't have any business being there in the first place. So I hope that it makes sense. The lender is very, very important and I do work with a great lender here in the Lancaster area. Happy to get you connected with them. All right, so once we've had our initial conversation, maybe we set up a Zoom call and talked a little further, and then we got you set up into the MLS. That went to number three, which was to talk to a lender and get that pre-qualification started. Number four, the fourth thing you should know when buying a home here in the Lancaster area and thing that you should do is, well, after we've got all that straightened out, we can go look at houses. Once we have that pre-qualification in hand, at that point in time, it's time to go look at some houses across the Lancaster County area. Now, there are some areas that you should know that are more competitive than others. As you get into some of the better school districts in the county, well, you're going to be seeing more competition. Generally speaking, the hottest markets that we are seeing here in the county tend to be centered around the Hempfield School District, Mannheim Township, Conestoga Valley, Lampeter, Strasburg, even Warwick and Penn Manor too, getting in on that action uh, with, the, with regards to better school districts and more competition overall for those homes. Hey, yeah, you can still buy a home in those areas and that's actually the more concentration of I would consider more of the suburbs of Lancaster overall where you can find more of a single family home and a yard type of a situation versus say going to a different school district where it may be more rural but also a little less competitive overall. So keep that in mind. But yeah, the showing start as soon as we get that pre-qualification in hand and you guys feel comfortable with going and taking a look. We can do these showings in two different ways. The first way is of course in person. If you're down here in Lancaster, we'll go look at as many houses as you would like during that time frame. Uh, get a real good sense of what the market is. But I know that a lot of people, and maybe this is you watching this, it's virtually impossible to get here in person. Well, that's okay. I've got some ways around that and it involves doing virtual tours. Now, I know it's not ideal, I know it's not the best thing ever, but the first thing we do is we walk through the home virtually live, whether it's through Zoom, a FaceTime call, Skype, whatever it is, we'll walk through the home live where you and I can interact with each other. I will point out any imperfections, I'll point out any awesome things about the house, and any things that you should know, generally speaking, about the home in general. And you'll get a good sense, regardless of what the cell coverage is like, you'll get a good sense of what the flow of that home does look like overall. However, if you're still interested in that home after we hang up that live call, well, then I'll go do the exact same thing all over again. I'll do a walkthrough and I will record that. I will put that video on a private link on YouTube that you can watch yourself and you can watch it as many times as you would like. And I'll do the same thing. I'll narrate me walking through. Hey, here, there's a door on the left. This is a linen closet door on the right. This is a powder room. Looks like a, just a single, uh, single vanity sink. And by the way, the plumbing looks good. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about here. And here's an example of that uh, up on the screen so you can actually see what more or less these things look like. And don't worry, I've got my gimbal with me, so we're going to be seeing uh, these homes together. And it's going to be nice and smooth, so I won't make it too sick as we go throughout the home itself. But it does give people a very good sense between the live walkthrough and the virtual one that's recorded. It gives a good sense of what that home is really like. I'm always going to be honest with you, so if I see things that are red flags, I'm absolutely going to point them out to you in either an in-person showing, a virtual, or a recorded showing overall. All right, now that we've been doing our showings together, that makes it to our next step in what it takes to buy a home here in the Lancaster area, and that is to put in an offer. Now, if you're not from this area or you're not from Pennsylvania in general, one thing to know is that our contracts to purchase a home are already pre-prepared. I uh, work a lot with folks that are moving here from New York and other states that require attorneys that are involved in the process, but we don't have that. Our forms are pre-prepared by attorneys and they are designed to be read in a way that a non-attorney can read them and understand what the different liabilities, what the different terms and what the different options you may have as a consumer. So here in Pennsylvania, we do not have attorneys, but that also means that we do get these big contracts that are generally one size fits all. And that also means that a lot of that may not even apply to you 
at all in your situation. For example, the same type of paperwork, the same type of information for somebody who's buying a large lot of land that has easements and, and ownership rights for minerals and things like that is not going to be uh, applicable to somebody who's looking for a three bedroom house on a quarter acre somewhere in the Lancaster area. So these one size fits all contracts look pretty at least daunting in general. And yeah, they're probably in the fifth ballpark about 14 pages generally for our agreement of sale and a little bit more depending on what addendums are attached to it. But a lot of that is not actually going to be something you have to care about. Usually it's a few pages, it's really not all that daunting. And generally the process is fairly informal as we put those offers together. Yes, we are writing everything down into a piece of paper. And yes, you are signing your side of those documents. But hey, if your offer does not get accepted, it's not like you're tied to the house. It's just like those documents disappear and we go about our way once again. So again, we talk about that offer. We're going to be going through all the pros and cons about doing things in terms of electing or waiving contingency contingencies, we're going to make sure that you fully understand what options you do have when it comes to putting in offers here in the Lancaster area. And also talk about some of the things that you can do to make your offer even better. Some secrets that I have that uh, I've been using to get my buyer clients under contract on homes without having to be the highest possible offer price. So ask me about those uh, when we finally get a chance to talk to each other. So that's the offer process and that is the next step. And then of course, if we get your offer accepted, we're going to be going through some of the negotiation periods, depending on what you've waived, what you've elected for. For example, if you've got an inspection that is going to be part of the process and we have that home inspection done, well, there may be some back and forth between the seller that we are going to have to cross and go ahead and have to do. Not a huge deal overall. Generally speaking, you know what? Both sides of the equation want to settle on this house. You want to purchase the house. The sellers want to sell the house. And that is the key about maintaining those emotions and keeping everybody in check. And as we move forward on the process, well, again, keeping the education strong, making sure you know exactly what options you have. And hey, I'm here to be your fierce negotiator all the way through the process. I am 100% on your team. And that is something that we will walk through together. All right, the very last step that you need to know about when purchasing a home here in the Lancaster area is once we've gone through all the negotiations, once we've gone through all the contracts, it's time to settle and time to get the keys to your brand new house here in Lancaster. And whether it's new construction, whether it's an existing home, whatever the case might be, I can help you with that. So of course, we are going to be going through that process altogether. You might be thinking to yourself, well, new construction, why would I need a real estate agent? But yes, it's important. And you should watch some of my other videos, pros and cons, all about Lancaster, plus the guide to buying new construction here in Lancaster. Please do watch those videos because there's some very important information that you should know about using an agent throughout all of those uh, types of situations. But yes, that's the, that's the end goal, is for us to get you into the perfect home for you that meets all of your real estate goals if you're moving here to the Lancaster area. And that's my goal, is to hand you those keys at the end of our closing at the settlement table. You sign that last paper, and hey, that house is yours. And I wanna help you do that. So again, here's some of my contact information, and I'd love to talk to you. Reach out to me anytime, and uh, you can shoot me a text, call me, email me as well, uh, and also you can head over to my website, see what I'm all about before you even send a message to me at all. I would love that too, that's fine. MattMoreHomes.com, by the way, you can check out my website, learn a little bit more about me and my philosophy on this whole real estate thing. You know, this is one uh, of the things that I love doing is these YouTube videos, and I also love to reach out and talk to people that are moving to this area, and I do it every single day, uh, helping people relocate here, and I would love to help you too. So again, here we're gonna some more of that contact information. Let's get in touch today. I do wanna help you out with your real estate goals, and of course, we have so many great things to offer here in the Lancaster area. You truly will love living here uh, because we've got a combination of great things, low cost of living, you've got everything that's affordable, the farmer's markets, the entertainment, the options, the things that you can do as part of living here in the Lancaster area. And uh, it is one of those places where we have some of those big city options, but we don't have the big city hustle bustle and lifestyle, and we don't have the big city cost of living too. That's the important part. So again, love to talk to you. Reach out anytime. We'll uh, have this conversation again. Check out my other videos too. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button too. Helps me grow my channel, reach more people. And of course, you can stay tuned on all of the future updates that I've got coming all about Lancaster County, Pennsylvania that you will want to know about for sure coming up. So thanks so much for watching. And until next time, take care.